So I did think about standing here at this, uh, this gate and just doing a slow video where you guys could watch the clouds roll across while I spoke. But I thought it might be a bit dull for you, so um, I'm going to try and find somewhere that's a little bit uh, more sheltered because at the moment I think the road wireless go, the dead cat on it, is probably uh, being challenged a bit and I won't know until I get home and really listen to this footage to see whether it's actually um, working or not. Um, but here we are in the, on the North Downs Way, just outside Dorking, um, south of London. So I'll try and find somewhere a bit quieter and a bit more tranquil to uh, have a chat to you. Hi there and welcome to this video. Um, as you've seen probably from the um, lead-in footage, the intro, um, today I've come out to um, a little spot just outside Dorking, south of London, about an hour south of London, and we're on the North Downs Way here. Um, and you get a really nice view up here um, on a sunny day. It was meant to be sunny today, or at least broken cloud. Um, however, as you can see, the UK weather is uh, as unpredictable as ever at this time of year. And it's a sort of gray day. The sun is threatening to poke through, um, but it's quite windy and uh, I don't think it's gonna come through that much today. So I've had to change my plan a bit. My plan was to go out and do some landscape uh, shooting. I'm gonna have to change that to perhaps some woodland shooting um, and get closer in where the, you know, the light, having a flat light is less of an issue. One of the things I've been thinking about during the week are the rumours of the Z8, which is potentially 2020, and the replacement for the D850 DSLR, which uh, could be 2020, but more likely 2021. And obviously both of those could be impacted by the um, COVID-19 uh, virus that is causing problems in the supply chain um, and increasingly a global issue. We've also recently seen some rumors about the Canon EOS R5, which is rumored to have a 45 megapixel sensor, be 8K video capable, and be able to do 120 frames per second slow-mo in 4K. So quite an interesting spec, got quite a few, um, quite a bit of interest from Canon users out there. And if we look at the Z8 and compare it, then the Z8 is rumored to perhaps be using Sony's um, 61 megapixel um, sensor in it, which is also 8K um, video capable, we believe, and potentially 120 frames per second slow-mo at 4K. Now with these rumors, we often focus on the stills capability of the cameras. However, I've been thinking about the video capability and the video route map. Now, a lot of people are still posting 1080p videos and they're pretty good quality for what we use. And they're obviously 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is about 2 million pixels. Um, if we move up to 4K, then there's a four times uh, multiplier in the number of pixels. We're up at um, 3840 by 2160, um, which is about 8.3 million pixels. Now, if we move up to 8K, then we multiply by four again because we're up at 7,680 pixels by 4,320, which is 33 million pixels. So a multiplier of four from 4K or 16 from 1080p, so quite a big jump up. And when I say it's quite a big deal or quite a big challenge, that's the whole way through the workflow. Everything from capture to storage and processing um, through distribution and then down to the users like yourselves of where you're watching it. So if we look at the Z7, then that's got a, a sensor that has 8,256 pixels along the long edge and 5,504 pixels along the short edge. Um, and that's capable of doing 4K video, as you know, the same as the Z6, um, but it's also capable of doing 8K time-lapse. Um, but you can only do that by capturing individual images and then processing them in software outside of the camera. So it does have enough pixels for 8K. Um, however, you get into the challenge of in-camera processing, which comes down to processor power, battery power, and then also heat. Now I had the um, Sony, I still have a Sony RX100, um, which is 4K capable, but that ran out of steam after about four minutes of recording when it overheats. and You have to let it cool down before you can carry on um, videoing in 4K. Um, 1080p is, is fine, um, but 4K is a real limitation. Now the Z7 doesn't have that um, challenge, it's a bigger camera, 
and it has a much better heat dissipation going on. Where moving to 8K would have a challenge for the Z7 is probably in the buffering, um, because the buffer in the Z7 is slightly smaller than probably required, and also in then storing. Now, that's less of an issue because we've got CF Express capability. Sorry, we've got a train going past. Um, train from Reading down to Gatwick. Um, so with CF Express, um, you go up a notch in terms of the um, ability to quickly get images and footage off of the um, camera and onto a um, CF Express card. Obviously with the latest ones that are out, you've got a write capability of 1400 bytes, uh, megabytes per second and 1700 read um, megabytes per second read capability um, and a theoretical maximum of two gigabytes per second read and write with the CF Express two channel architecture of the Type B cards that are compatible with the Z6 and Z7. If we think about um, storing off of the camera so and processing um, you're going to need a different setup. You know, there's no two ways about it. Even processing 4K, I'm having to think about my storage strategy, my processing, um, my computer when it's rendering takes quite a lot of capability. And then also um, you need really a monitor that's capable of seeing the output quality. So, you know, and they're still quite expensive. And then when it comes to um, viewing, if you want to view 8K um, footage, you're really talking about quite expensive TVs at the moment. We're talking about here in the UK, £2,000 upwards for an 8K capable TV. Um, they tend to be 55 inch um, size and above. And then, you know, to be a sensible viewing distance, you've got to be about two to four meters away from that um, screen to be able to really benefit from it. Um, so some interesting constraints there from a um, viewing perspective. Now, a lot of video is produced for YouTube at the moment, um, although it's not exclusively why people um, use their mirrorless cameras. Um, and if I look at my stats, I can't obviously see what, what resolutions you guys are using, but it does give me some stats on the type of device that's being used. And what I'm seeing from my um, stats is that for my channel, about 60% of you are using computers or tablets and about 40% are mobile devices. And that's likely to be a trend that continues um, and has an impact on how people view content and therefore how we produce content. And you've got to challenge yourself, do we really need 8K footage for mobile devices? However, if people are increasingly seeing YouTube as a, an alternative to traditional um, linear TV programming or perhaps an alternative to um, some of the new upstarts like Netflix, Apple TV, then actually increasingly we may see a pull towards people viewing this kind of content on TVs and therefore 8K becomes more relevant. Now my logic has always been if I record in 4K you guys can view it at a lower resolution if that works for you because you're on mobile devices or you can watch it on 4K. So I think there will be a pull towards increasingly people producing 8K content, um, but it's not as much of a draw um, in certainly for the next year, I would suggest, as perhaps some of the commentators are perhaps making out. So if we circle back to what I've been musing on over the last week or so with the rumors about the Z8 and the D850 replacement, um, if we look at where we are today with the Z6 and the Z7, then obviously the Z7 has a higher megapixel sensor, and that's great for stills images, um, and you can produce really good 4K content on it. The Z6, because it's got a smaller um, uh, sensor in terms of number of pixels, it has a um, bigger pixel area for each pixel and is therefore better for low light and is arguably better for 4K video because you don't have to downsample. It's got the right number of pixels for a 4K video. So if we perhaps jump forward a year when the Z8 has been released, um, as I say, it's likely to use the um, Sony 61 megapixel technology, although likely to be a Nikon design using that, um, that sensor. Um, it's likely that that will be, as I say, 61 megapixels for a still image, but 8K capable. Um, and 4K slow-mo at 120 frames per second. We'll still have the Z6 as a really capable um, low-light um, camera and 4K capable video 
um, capture device. In the middle though, the Z7, I think there's a, an opportunity here that we might actually see the second generation of the Z7 probably in 2021. Um, it's likely that that will be a sort of half upgrade, a Z7S, as Nikon has uh, used in the past perhaps. It will perhaps have a, um, a faster processor, um, slightly uprated buffer. It will be CF Express capable. Um, and we'll probably see an upgrade in sensor, not necessarily in the number of megapixels, but we may see the, a similar sensor size to the Canon EOS R5, and it will be, you know, perhaps mid 40s megapixels. It will be 8K capable though. And what this means is that like the Z6 is probably arguably the slightly better 4K machine, you may see that with the upgrades to the processor um, and buffering and an upgraded sensor that actually the Z7S could be the best, the optimum, 8K capture device. The Z8 will be 8K capable, but with the number of megapixels, you will have to pixel bin the same way as the Z7 pixel bins versus the Z6. So we could see a really interesting mix here of Z6, Z7S, and Z8 as a really neat um, pro lineup from Nikon in mid-2021. So what do you think uh, the future is of the lineup, the Z? six, seven, eight lineup. Where do you think Nikon will pitch it? What are your aspirations in that space? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, um, obviously hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.